One of the fantastic things we have here in the city of Logan is uh, that we are well represented in, ca in cabinet. And, um, you know, that we were asked before about how do we get the state government uh, to, um, to hear our needs. Well, one of the best ways is to actually have four ministers who represent the city of Logan. Um, and, and that's fantastic. But one of the ministers who uh, we absolutely adore uh, is uh, Leanne Enoch. She's not just a minister who represents uh, one of the seats in Logan, the seat of Elgester, but she actually grew up in Logan. And uh, in fact, we grew up two streets apart. And, um, and, and she's part of, uh, her family are part of the legends of our, of our city. They really are. She, she loves, she loves it. When it but, uh, but, and, and the history that her family has brought to, to our city and it's been part of our city for you know, thousands and thousands of years has just uh, been a tremendous, um, tremendous addition to who we are in the city of Logan. So those of you who don't know, uh, Minister Leannock, Leanne Enoch, sorry, who's Leannock? That's a new one. It's an afternoon. Leannock is the, the Honourable Leannock. Fantastic. <laughs> I know well, I was going to sit down right now. Look, she was elected to the seat of Elgester in 2015 election, became the first Aboriginal woman to be elected to Queensland Parliament and the first Aboriginal woman to be a Minister of Cabinet. Let's give her a big round of applause for that alone. She is the Minister for uh, Science, Innovation, uh, Digital Economy and Small Business. So everything that we've been talking about is under uh, Minister Enoch's portfolio. And I have to say that she has tracked our attention in innovation and digital transformation from its conception. And she is well behind us and she is uh, right across what we're trying to achieve and is absolutely supportive. She has broken other engagements to be with us today. And so it's a real honour to uh, stand up here and to introduce you, the Honourable Leanne Enoch, to come and have a chat to us today. Well, how are you all going? Friday afternoon, it's been a big couple of days. You look really energised and energised. Yeah, okay, that's good. <laughs> Uh, let me begin, of course, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we gather, and in doing so, may I acknowledge the more than 3,000 generations of Yagara, Yugambeh speaking people who have maintained cultural practices on this country, and can I acknowledge all of our elders from wherever you come from, whatever your culture, uh, those that are past and those still with us guiding us into the future. Uh, can I acknowledge our incredibly uh, vibrant and somewhat tongue-twisted uh, Lord Mayor, oh, Lord Mayor, Mayor, Mayor of, uh, I'll call you Lord Mayor if you wish, uh, Mayor of Logan, <laughs> Luke Smith, uh, friend to everybody. Of course, all the councillors that are here, but also my uh, really good friend and incredibly hardworking local member for Logan, Linus Power, uh, who I know has been an, uh, an incredible supporter of this event over the last two days, uh, but every day is working hard for our area and understands in explicitly and implicitly how important small business and innovation is uh, to our city. So absolutely uh, fantastic to see Linus here and thank you for all the support that you give to our community. Can I also acknowledge uh, all the mayors and councillors and uh, all the dignitaries that are here. I have this huge long list and I'm not sure everybody on the list is actually here. So please just take it as me acknowledging you, uh, you know, everybody. <laughs> All right, now I want to talk to you about something. I had a great speech someone wrote for me, but I'm not going to use it. I've chucked it out as I walked in because I thought, oh, I'm just going to speak normally. And uh, so my advisors just had a heart attack, but that's all right. <laughs> now, at the beginning of this month, I had my birthday. It was the 1st of May. So I'm, I know you missed it all, so I, I expect some belated gifts. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, I turned 49 on that birthday. I know, I don't look like it, do I? <laughs> but I turned 49. Um, and uh, I have a 16-year-old son. And at this time in his life, he's in year 12. And it made me think about when I was in year 12. So it was 1985 at Woodridge State High School. Uh, and how different my, his life is compared to where I was uh, back in 1985. And it made me think that 
really, it is fair to say that over the next 10 years, if you think about what we've just seen in the last 30 years, imagine over the next 10 years, we are going to see the equivalent of about 100 years of change. That's how fast things are moving. And for my son, my 16-year-old son, when he's my age, looking back when he was in grade 12, he is going to be in a completely different space altogether. Uh, he will have a whole heap of other challenges that uh, we haven't anticipated yet, and he'll have a whole heap of things, technology, etc., that he's going to be engaged in. And a lot of that will be uh, whether he's being able to engage in it in a productive, effective way, whether there'll be jobs uh, for his generation into the future, will be down to how we look at things right now. Uh, we know that the world is changing really quickly and we need to keep pace, not just keep pace, we need to get ahead of the pace. If we're going to be able to secure the kinds of jobs and the economies that we need uh, for the future, for my 16-year-old son, uh, for all of our children and for our own lives, there's a lot of work to be done. And that's why the Palaszczuk government has, has committed uh, $405 million into a whole of government initiative called Advance Queensland. We are setting a cracking pace because we know we've got very limited time to be able to get things in place right now in preparation for massive change that's on the horizon. 10 years, equivalent of 100 years of change. Like that's, that's pretty realistic, I think. Uh, so inside the Advanced Queensland Initiative, there are a whole heap of uh, programs that are designed to be able to bring uh, together our environment, uh, our conditions, to uh, harness and foster innovation. And so what you have been doing over the last two days has been part of this bigger conversation that we've been having in Queensland about ensuring we've got all of the right ingredients to support innovation in this state. So we've, we've already supported about 900 small businesses, innovators, entrepreneurs, researchers, etc., uh, to be able to make sure that we've got some really innovative pro, uh, programs uh, and projects that are going to assist with building new industries. We're very lucky in this state because we've had a massive investment in research. So those of you who have been in Queensland for quite some time, uh, under the Smart State Initiative, at, um, that's the government before the last government, uh, that was also a Labor government. Um, during that time, we saw a $4.9 billion investment in research infrastructure in this state because um, Peter Beatty, the Premier at that time, he understood that there'd be a juncture on the horizon and that we needed to have all the right infrastructure in place to be able to support new ideas, new industries, new jobs of the future. So we've been very good at that stuff. We're great at research in this state. We're great at research in the country but we've been very poor at the commercialisation of those, of those great ideas. Uh, many of our great ideas and research um, has been um, fostered here and then it's gone off overseas somewhere else to actually be turned into a product that then gets sold back to us. We do not want our kids to be just the consumers of great ideas. We want them to be the creators, the creators of great products and services. And so that's why Advanced Queensland has been very much focused on ensuring that we are supporting that valley of death time, getting those ideas out of the, out of the, uh, off the pages and out of the labs and actually into commercial reality that creates jobs and creates whole new industries that we can invest in and that we can see private investment and that we can attract more people to, uh, to the state. So even though with all of that framework, I think there's still a couple of challenges for us. There's some big challenges and I think uh, from what I've been following on Twitter and um, on social media from this event over the last two days, I think you have also been looking at these uh, particular challenges. Uh, one is um, digital inclusion. Like I think we're going to have some real challenges around digital inclusion. Things are moving so quickly that we are potentially, we could have a situation where those who are marginalised will be even further marginalised. You've been talking about smart cities, about uh, sensors, about the digital technology that you'll be able to use that we'll all embrace in the next 10 years, five years, two years. Uh, but if we don't bring everybody with us, we're going to have some issues. We're going to have some big social issues. And so I think that's a massive challenge. We're doing a few things out of our Advanced Queensland Initiative, like we're working with seniors, for instance, to make sure that um, you know, that they're able to be part of the new economy, part of the access to digital um, uh, services, etc. 
Uh, we've got a program called Tech Savvy Seniors that uh, operates in libraries across Logan and across Queensland. Uh, so we're working on that. We've been working on our, um, with our young students as well. For the first time, Queensland now has coding and robotics as part of our uh, um, offering at school, in primary school. There's more to be done in terms of entrepreneurship. Like we really need to support uh, that idea of being able to be an entrepreneur if we're going to ensure that kids are engaging in that space. Um, but there's a whole heap of issues around digital inclusion that I think we need to even spend some more time on. And that is about digital infrastructure. So you could be absolutely uh, know how to use all these products, uh, know how to use the services, uh, you're, you're digital savvy, etc. cetera. Um, but if you don't have digital infrastructure, then we're in strife. So we all know, we can talk about NBN until the, until the cows come home. Uh, there are big issues with NBN, and it's not necessarily, uh, you know, there's a lot of finger pointing, it's their fault, it's their fault. I, I don't think we should waste time with that. I think we should just be looking at how do we leverage what's happening already and how do we get around it if we have to. Um, NBN, unfortunately, has been so slow that new technologies are going to take over and we've missed some of the opportunities that should have been in place already in this country. It's an embarrassment, to be honest. We're now ranked 50th in the world in terms of our internet speed. Um, New Zealand is ahead of us. I mean, it's, that's embarrassing. Um, you know, and so there are people now across our state who are trying to find solutions to this and coming up with whole new ways to be able to uh, ensure that they've got the right digital infrastructure. So you go out to um, some of our... There's a great example um, uh, just sort of... Uh, in between Townsville and Mackay out west, um, there's a guy out there that's got this new infrastructure that he developed because NBN wasn't going to come there. There's no fibre optic out there. They had to find some other way to be able to uh, get, uh, get the digital infrastructure that they needed. And you all know the farmers, um, our farmers, our agricultural sector, are really investing in, in technology because you know there are some incredible ways to be able to um, ensure that you've got greater yield. Uh, so this farm in particular, uh, they came up with this infrastructure where um, it's called Sky, I think it's called. And so Sky, And Sky is really about a network of um, Wi-Fi sort of mesh, if you like. And they've done it themselves. Because they said, we're just going to do it ourselves. And they've involved council and they've involved private sector to just bypass the NBN issue. So these are the kinds of things we're going to have to be thinking about. If we don't have the right digital infrastructure, then everything that we've been talking about, the big investment that we've made in the smart state and the investment that we've made now in advanced Queensland will all be for naught. Uh, because if you cannot get online, if you cannot get access to fast, reliable, affordable internet, uh, then it's going to be very difficult to engage in the global market and, of course, in the digital economy. So for me, they're the two big challenges that are sitting in, in my mind constantly. If we know that the world is changing so dramatically that we're going to see uh, the equivalent of 100 years of change over the next 10 years, uh, and we're investing so much in advanced Queensland and in these kinds of events, if we don't think about how we include everybody in this story, we're going to have some particularly large social issues, uh, not to mention some political issues, because if we don't bring everybody along, uh, potentially there'll be those who capitalise on the fear that some have about innovation and bring us back. Um, but also, if we don't tackle the digital infrastructure stuff, digital infrastructure, to me, is as, and is as important as roads and rail. It really is. And if we don't commit some energy around that, we're going to find ourselves in the next 10 years in a real bind. Uh, Luckily, we've got some incredibly smart, innovative people in this state and we're supporting them and we're seeing some uh, really different ways to be able to get around these things. Um, the other issue uh, that I think is a challenge in, this, in the innovation area um, is something that governments, so council, state government, um, federal government, uh, can challenge themselves with as well. And that is procurement. So in terms of how um, startups and small business operate in this state, if we're asking them to be innovative, uh, we can provide grants, but I tell you what, every startup and every small business out there would give up a grant any day to have a customer. So customers are going to be an incredibly important part 
of um, how we scale up and grow um, businesses in this state. Uh, so that's why for governments, and let's look at the state government, we are one of the biggest uh, customers in Queensland. We're also one of the most difficult customers in Queensland uh, because there is so much um, risk, um, adverse activity. We're always scared that if we, uh, if, a, if a procurement goes wrong and something, you know, ends up on the front page of the paper and then everyone gets nervous and pulls back. So we've got to find some new ways to be able to procure because we need to create opportunities for businesses to scale up. It's absolutely crucial and government agencies um, are an important part of that. So that's why also under the Advanced Queensland Initiative, we've got a few things that we're trying to test out. So we've had uh, a program called TWIG, Testing Within Government. Uh, we've, we've offered IT companies the opportunity to come in and test their product in uh, state government and get that uh, support so that they can then uh, tender for products, etc. Uh, we've also, for the first time in the country, we've established uh, SBIR, which is Small Business Innovation Research. Something that if you've got an eye for this already happens in the US and happens in the UK. So we've started that in Queensland for the first time uh, and that's the first in the country. Uh, we're basically, instead of going out with, oh, we've already worked out what we want and we're just going to ten get tenders for that, uh, that we actually present the challenge and we ask people to come and start working on solutions that we may never even have thought of. Very different ways for government, but uh, we're doing it sort of over here in a neat kind of safe place so that we can teach the rest of government that this is a good way to be able to procure. And hopefully through those processes and all of us being included in this, that we get some uh, less nervousness about how we procure. So look, that's a big range of things that I've just mentioned in there. Uh, but for me, when I think about uh, the work that I do and why I um, remain so passionate about this is that I think about the 16-year-old self that I was in 1985 and I think about the 16-year-old of my son and what he's going to be um, inheriting from us in the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, and I think about how we've got to get some stuff right at the moment and we've got to put our energies to this in ways that we haven't had to do before. And technology obviously will play a huge part in all of that. Uh, number one is collaboration, of course. And I think that's been the key message from the last two days. Uh, being able to collaborate, uh, to have that structured serendipity, to have collision of ideas, find ways to be able to be open to all of this, uh, to find new solutions to problems that we're facing at the moment. Uh, and inside of that, for me, those two big, or three big challenges, digital inclusion, uh, digital infrastructure and the way that we procure as government agencies. If we can work on those things, I think we'll find some really interesting uh, solutions to how we ensure that Queenslanders are not just ready for the new industries and new economies, but that we're leading some of these and we're driving it, uh, not just in Australia, but globally. So, all of that is pretty exciting. Some people find it a little bit scary. Um, some people find innovation a little bit scary. The, whole, uh, the name of it, the whole idea of it, the idea that perhaps innovation is going to mean I'm going to lose my job. But there is nothing to be fearful about when it comes to innovation. As human beings, we've been innovating since the dawn of time. There's nothing new about that. Um, let me tell you, as a single mother of two sons, uh, I innovate every day in this job just to survive. Uh, so there's nothing new about it. But if we can all together um, focus our energies on this, collaborate, um, have that collision of ideas, and we can make everybody feel like this is actually an exciting path where there are brand new jobs just waiting for us to retrain for, just waiting for our young people to have the right skills for, then we will have a very, very exciting future together. So thanks for being part of this conversation over the last two days. I know what comes out of here is going to make a huge difference for the various regions that have come together uh, to be part of it. Uh, and I know in Logan we'll see some incredible opportunities as a result of what's come out of today. So thank you so very much. I'm willing to take some questions if you have questions specifically about Advanced Queensland or anything else. This is where you applaud. Thank you. <laughs> No, that's all right. Oh, no, no, that's fine. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, you can stop now. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Is this being live streamed? I've just realised. <laughs> it's Friday afternoon, everybody. Hi, um, my name is Nick and I'm uh, here representing a company called Operate. Um, just an observation to begin with, if you don't mind, I would encourage you to throw away all of your uh, scripts in future. You've spoken from the heart and it's really actually struck a chord for me today. So great, thank you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Hear that, advisor? <laughs> Um, the, one, the, the one question that we do have is the fact that obviously we're, we're entrenched in IT um, here in Queensland. We're a Queensland-based company. We are a small business. Um, I think the one thing that, that small business at this moment in time is observing is the fact that the state government bureaucracy is actually purchasing American cloud <coughs> services mm. and not actually investing in local infrastructure providers that can actually assist in the, in the, in the production of the infrastructure, digital infrastructure that you're mm. looking for. Mm. How do we open those doors? Yeah, that's a, really, that's a really good question. And that's a question that I'm faced with as well. Uh, so you've got to think about the history <laughs> of um, a large bureaucracy such as a, as a government, a government, state government. You know, all of these agencies, there's been massive fear about procurement, um, particularly in the IT space, because we all know it doesn't matter, doesn't matter where you get your IT service from, there's going to be some issues at some stage, somewhere along the line. Um, but it, this is what ends up on the front page, you know? And so there's been a lot of fear around this. This is why we've been trialling these new ways of trying to help um, the bureaucracy uh, feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so the testing within government, et cetera. Have you been a part of any of that? No. So I, I would encourage you to get onto the website, advanced.qld.gov.au, and in there, we're about to, I think we're about to start the next round of TWIG, actually. Is it, Dan? Uh, the applica okay, applications have closed for the next round, but then uh, straight after that, there'll be another lot. We had some incredible um, local IT companies come in and work on these particular areas with government agencies, and a couple of them got uh, some contracts as a result of that. And it's kind of eased some of the uh, risk sort of issues that those agencies have had. Uh, but you'll pay attention for uh, the next few months and the next uh, next 12 months, really, because we'll see more and more of those sort of challenge-based ways that we're procuring, and that's where we want um, IT companies and small businesses to really take a hand, take hold of that and come in with some new solutions. Uh, and we're doing it in a way that won't have the same tender process. But it's a challenge that I'm I'm working on every day, trying to find some new ways to break up that that fear and risk that risk adverse that's happening. Um, in government. I'm doing it in my agency. In my agency, um, so I'm with the Department of Science, um, IT and Innovation. So in that agency, for instance, there is some issues that I'm working on around the cloud-based stuff after past policies. Um, but we've already, um, I think we've, we've increased our um, small business um, contracts by 40 odd percent in the last 12 months and we expect to do that again in the next 12 months. So I've put a directive, because it's come from me, to my department saying I want to see more small businesses, local businesses, engaged in contracts in this department so that we can lead by example for the rest of the government. But keep asking the question, I think, it's important. Hello, my name's Vicky Lyons and I'm with my daughter from Accessibility. My question is, um, it's very simple. You mentioned about tech savvy being for the elderly. What about for the, the kids that have gone through school when it was a special school and they weren't actually taught anything but mm. reading, writing, arithmetic? Mm -mm. They're not tech savvy mm. and they don't have access to facilities mm -hmm. and their parents are keeping them sheltered at home. How do you enable them yeah. to have access? Yeah, I guess it's that, uh, so on one hand, uh, we've invested uh, just over $300,000 in libraries across the state to do um, coding and robotics. And we're, we've asked them to do those workshops in those libraries, but if that's not an accessible point, that's that's a concern. These are the, these are the children that have left schools. So they're now yes. young adults. Yes. And they've missed out on the opportunity of learning how to do the IT. Mm. And they're on the fringe of society, so they don't understand it. They can use a mobile phone, but they're usually not even linked to Facebook because their parents have said, no, that's taboo. Mm. So they, they're actually that So how link. would we, I mean, this is the thing, we'll go to yeah. the infrastructure that's there and we'll put the resources right. in there to provide the services, yeah. but how would we get okay. into so family homes? Yeah. Yeah. So part of that is a lot of kids will go into tertiary education and they will go and do 
the disability. So again, they're just repeating literacy, as yeah. in the ABCs. Mm -hmm. They're learning how to count and how to handle up to $20 to go and do their basic shopping. They're learning how to navigate public transport systems. But they're still not getting onto the internet. Yeah. So maybe we need to go to the tertiary and say to them, while you're doing that, teach them IT skills. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll take that one on notice because I think um, there's, a, there's the issue about digital inclusion and if we don't do certain targeted um, activities, we're going to see further marginalisation. So can I talk to you afterwards about that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Leanne. I've spoken to you a few times yes, before. Yes, Jane, how yes, are you? Jane, good to see you again. Looking um, stunning. Oh, thank you. So do you. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's <laughs> what I was, I was fishing for that. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll oblige. That's right. <laughs> My question is in terms of innovation, mm -hmm. where are the crossovers and are there any crossovers between the various offices, for instance, Shannon's office, Mick DeBrenny's office with housing, um, and Cameron's office in health mm -hmm. in terms of bringing innovative ideas into all of those portfolios. Um, in my particular area, say for instance in domestic violence, all of those portfolios are included in that and I don't really see very much mm. interaction. Yeah, so again, um, some of this is new, you know, some of this is new ways of looking at things, not really, but you know, for government bureaucracies it is challenging. Uh, so that's why we've started with the SBIR and we've had uh, a number of agencies like TMR, so Transport and Main Roads. Uh, we've had um, uh, Health actually is on the on the board for the next SBIR. Um, and uh, we've had Environment and Health and we've had Sport uh, in the first round of the SBIR where they've put up a major challenge and they've, you know, we've had small businesses and startups come in and um, pitch for those. Uh, what we're trying to do is to is to get everybody engaged in the Advanced Queensland Initiative. So there is funding that we're seeing in the Advanced Queensland Initiative in education, for instance. Um, so we're seeing sort of like that pipeline of workers, the STEM sort of focus. Uh, in health, there is a there's a growing conversation about uh, innovative practices. Uh, I'm also speaking to health about being. Um, you know, a customer, like I want them to be customers for the sort of products that we're actually seeing now through our, through the Advanced Queensland stuff. Um, but so for instance, uh, Ignite Ideas, which is one of the program areas for Advanced Queensland, uh, where we fund people to take their great idea to the next level. Many of them cross all agencies. So you'll see them in the Ignite Ideas pool. Oh, we've got to go. You'll see them in the next, uh, well, you'll see them in the um, supported, uh, these funded, um, uh, ideas, they're really great, but they cross every single agency. And so now my job is to take them to each agency and try and pitch them in there so that we can be a better customer. That's where I'm sort of starting and then people may feel, or agencies may feel a bit more comfortable and start seeing their own role and all of that. But it's a cultural shift. So just as I was saying, it's a cultural shift in the community because people have some fear around all this sort of stuff and we have to help bring everybody along. It's a cultural shift inside big bureaucracies, um, whether that's state government, federal government, um, you know, local government sometimes. Uh, you're seeing leadership in those areas where, you know, we're trying to shift the culture, but it takes a little while. So I'm trying to find new ways to push people in different directions. Hmm. Can I talk to you afterwards as well? Okay. <laughs> No worries. Yeah, I've got two more things I have to go to speak to, but yeah, that's all right. You can, yeah, you can come. Yeah, come with me. Yeah, so, you know, I got to go talk to small businesses next, so just come. Yeah. Oh, I was looking at the camera. <laughs> I was about to phone. Any, any other questions? All good. All done. Oh, yep. I mean, the team of experts who over the past, the past 15 years have developed a risk mitigation strategy for um, sexual harassment, misconduct, and similar in uh, organizations and government. I believe you have been acquainted with that through yes. in the past. One of the problems that we are faced with is that we seem to be too small in some areas and too big in others. Um, we have uh, barriers in uh, procurement. Mm -hmm. um, we have... Uh, barriers in financial assistance. So I'm wondering whether there is a place uh, within your programs where 
um, there is a support to create pilot programs, for example, within government to test those systems so that then we can convince government that these things work. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I guess that's why the twig, testing within government, has been one way of doing that, but in the IT space. And as we, as we see that sort of flesh out a little bit more, then I'm hoping we'll see some other opportunities for the more social um, service kind of space. But I don't have an answer for you on that one just yet, but I'm moving in that direction. Um, can I just add one thing, though, is, um, and I, sh I should have mentioned this in my big long spiel before, but uh, one of the other things that we're trying to do is uh, build the innovation ecosystem across the state where your great ideas can sit next to a lot of other great ideas and you can help each other manoeuvre in and out of um, these opportunities. So many of you will have known that we um, opened officially the precinct in the valley in the TC Burn building um, a couple of months ago. Maybe it was last month. It, was, it wasn't last week anyway, so it was some weeks ago. Um, and the precinct is this 5,000 square metre um, shared working space for startups, etc. the biggest in Queensland. And then on top of that, I've um, been able to secure funding for each of the regions, so 12 regions across the state, uh, to build regional innovation. Uh, so this is the Regional Innovation Fund, um, and that is half a million dollars for each region to build on either infrastructure or um, supports or, or systems uh, to be able to bring great ideas like yours, startups, small businesses, innovators, entrepreneurs, researchers together uh, to be able to build the innovation ecosystem in that region and then feed into the broader precinct and have this big sort of web across our state. Uh, that funding is about to roll out um, as each region has secured um, or their proposal or finalised their proposal. So Logan Redlands have got multiple partners that have come together as a consortium, uh, including the Logan Council, etc. To be able to put this proposal forward, um, to be able to secure the five hundred thousand dollars, to bring people like yourself together and network you with the rest of the state, so that might be another thing that uh, you could be interested in. All of you, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, they're about to get out the big hook and move me, <laughs> but I would have loved to have stayed all day. I could. This is this is a, the best conversation um, that you could be having right now at, at this very time. So congratulations to all the organisers, to all the councils that have come together on this one, um, and congratulations to all of you to be being part of this. You are now the um, the leaders, uh, the promoters, uh, the evangelists of this work, and we need you all because uh, we need everybody on the same page with this stuff to move us forward. So thank you so much. Indeed. Thank you very much, Minister Enoch. And, uh, and we're very lucky, of course, that no one has to follow that performance. It's uh, only afternoon tea uh, because uh, ain't no one going up against that. Uh, so thank you very much, Minister. We're very, it, is, it is a great privilege uh, and something that we're very uh, lucky to have a minister come along and speak to us for so long and to answer so many questions. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And again, testament to, um, testament to uh, our mayor bringing so many people together. And the other thing I'd say about that is... And it really reflects and reinforces what Oakley has just said to us a minute ago, that leadership and mandate and legitimacy are oh so important. You have that here in Logan with your mayor. You have that here in Queensland with a very supportive Minister for Innovation. You heard the things that she was saying about risk aversion in government, about digital infrastructure. Now, that is a very, very forward uh, looking uh, for a government. It is a great advantage for you here in Queensland, a great advantage for Logan. So, of course, now is the time. Uh, innovation is on the rise. So please do take the opportunity. Go through the door when it's open.